All right, here we are. And now, Lawrence, this is for you. If you do not win the Democratic nomination, <laughs> come on, what are the chances of that? <laughs> Will you run as a third party candidate? Look, I want to be a Democratic candidate. I want to have a chance on the Democratic stage to rally people to what I think is an issue at the core of the Democratic Party, restoring democracy to the people. And that's what I want to do. I want the chance to do that. Now, it's been hard because, you know, I'm a teacher. I'm not a billionaire. I'm not a politician. If I were a politician, I could be paid while I was running for the United States uh, presidency. But as a teacher, once I start running, I got to give up my job. So there's a period of time where I can run on credit cards and savings accounts when they can't pay me from the campaign or anything, where I try to get into the race. And what I did in my case was raise a million dollars in less than 30 days. That's more than five Republican candidates. It's more than Jim Webb and Lincoln Chafee, and it's just about exactly what uh, O'Malley raised. I rallied 10,000 people to the campaign. We have a real campaign staff. I qualified for public funding, but the Democratic Party wouldn't even acknowledge me as a candidate. And so the polls wouldn't include me on their polls. And so when they said 1% you have to be at to be in this uh, race. I, I would be careful about this is kind of what Jim Webb was doing the other night. Like, <laughs> you know, hey, I, I saw that. I, you know, yeah, you know, it so you comes know. off as whiny and then people yeah, yeah. don't during, like during, it. During, during the debate, I tweeted. They won't let me talk. They won't let me on the debate. During, during the debate, I tweeted that you should be included. So I was trying yeah. to help you out. But the point, but the question is, Bill, now here's the question. <laughs> Do we know that was really? I know. But you're on the other side there, John. No, I know. I, I, I'm all for I, all for all fair, yes, right? Yes, I don't, I don't say that. Fair play. play. That's what we need. What do you have to do okay. to be able to... We allow everybody in the Republican debate. There, right? I, but, <laughs> the, I, you know, I think we've been everybody. around this Mulberry Bush, but the issue, I think, is being raised by, by the other candidates. I, but I, if the issue is, how do we get a democracy right. first? Like, how do we make that the priority? What, Bill, what Bernie uh, said in well, that debate, the I mean, one line that I think was the most important line, I not mean, mentioned by anybody, he said, if we're going to have any chance of addressing these problems, we've got to deal with ca with campaign finance, which is exactly my But problem. this is I my... my but, but, you know, 80% you know, of Republicans agree with you, according to the Bloomberg polling this week, which is fascinating. I thought his line was about the damn email. But, I mean, what, what, one on. of my big problems with liberals in this era is, is the, their ability to nitpick fights on the very, 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 very far end of the spectrum. So, you know, Dolce and Gabbana, remember that? How dare they say, because they're two ancient Italian men, that they don't think that the baby should be made artificially. Well, you know, you agree with them on 99% of the thing. They're two no, gay no, men. No, I, you really want to pick this giant I don't, I don't know about this example you're citing, Bill, but I do believe... Well, I'll tell I, you I all do, about I, it. I, 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 no, but you didn't I, hear about the Dolce I, & Gabbana scandal? Well, I follow Dolce & Gabbana, but in stores, not this <laughs> But, um, but, But I believe very much in working with people, and you subsume a lot of the differences you might have to, make, to, to campaign on one big issue, and I don't believe in sectarian fights. Um, and I think the liberals, the real problem with liberals over the last decades has been that they haven't taken their own side in the fight. And I think one of the things that's appealing to a Ber a Bernie Sanders, put aside socialism, is he's a fighter. And he's fighting right. on behalf right. of right. people but, and but, not but, special interests. People want to fight him. So let's, let's, let's fight point. the people that he's but, fighting instead of fighting not, him. Bill, the, good not thing not about not the good thing about the Dolce and Gabbana thing is it established unequivocally that Elton John is king of the gays, right? We <laughs> now know that definitively. But, but look, this is, and this I'm is, not, this is not a small issue. The point is, no, it's not. The nation was founded 150 years ago to redeem the promise of democracy. I do not make it a small issue. Johan, what's behind the rise of anti establishment establishment candidates like Jeremy Corbyn in the UK. Yeah, the Jeremy Corbyn is the candidate for the Liberal Party and he is way out there to the left. Uh, I mean, it's like really more than Bernie Sanders even is here in America. Much more Absolutely. than Bernie Sanders. He's I mean, yeah, way to the left. Yeah. Name <laughs> some of his uh, positions yeah. that would uh, that would establish this point. Well, it's very interesting. One of the key things about Jeremy Corbyn is that he's a rejection of the New Labour project. So I think one of the things that happened in the US is that the Bush years were so horrific and so awful that it kind of precluded some of the things that went wrong under the New Democrats and under Clinton. And Jeremy Corbyn, that didn't really, we didn't have that same gap in Britain. So Jeremy Corbyn is really about, first thing he said was about apologising for the Iraq war, but also about rejecting so much of the kind of neoliberalism of the New Labour years, of the Tony Blair years. And I think a similar thing has to, Bernie actually represents a similar critique of the Clinton years, although he doesn't couch it as that. And we really need that. A lot of the things that are going wrong for those people in Vegas that I met, they did go wrong under the Clinton years. We, we can forget that. You're right that there were good things as well. It's important to acknowledge no, that. No, no, I'm, sure. I'm not a Clinton booster. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. yeah. All right, John, do you see Marco Rubio as a serious content? What? Yes. 
Yes. Right? I mean, he's the guy I predicted uh, would win the yeah, nomination. I think it's going to come down to three three folks. It's going to come down to, uh, on the establishment side, Rubio, Kasich, or Jeb. I still think Jeb yeah. has a shot. And I think on the other side, it's going to be Ted Cruz. Uh, I don't like Ted Cruz. I don't want him to be it, but I think it's going to be him. So it's going to be one of those against one of those three against Ted Cruz John, for the final, put, final nom. What odds would you put on Trump being the nominee? Uh, 20%. That's, that's high. That's, I'm, well, I, I, I'm going to fly out of here. He's, died, well, he's yeah. died many oh, times. Oh, yeah. The media has he's, completely he, yeah. turned around on him. Let me, let me say something about Donald Trump. Uh, and this, no one has played the media better than Donald Trump. Yeah. Well, he's played the media. He is, but, but no one has done social media with the Twitters. He is dominating the news coverage of this whole, this whole campaign right. in ways that no one has ever seen because he does it off the cuff. And he's authentic in his own kind of crazy way. John, right. to be and I, I think it's, I think it's fascinating. You can talk about social media. But this past summer, I don't I like think him. This past summer was an example of media malpractice Absolutely. at its highest. Well, it could you be. You could not turn on a TV set without Donald Trump listen, sucking listen. up all the options. Listen, listen, listen. You're, it was, you're, it was a great you're preaching. You're preaching to the establishment no, choir. But I will say, and I'm, but I'm the establishment. But let me say this. Let me say this. That the reason he got in the news so much is because he's newsworthy, and he says stuff that. What's and it, He's newsworthy, newsworthy for exactly in, in, in the world we live in. It doesn't take eight weeks to lime the Thank depths you. of Donald Trump's brain. Like, we could figure that out <laughs> in about a week. He's and always then, But if you look at it, we had this huge amount he's of coverage He's clickbait, but he's Trump. good clickbait. And we had a huge amount of coverage about this ridiculous and email scam. I know. And then and less, less coverage of Bernie Sanders who, than who the email scam. To me, the interesting like, question. Like, hey, you guys are on the media. I know. But this is It's worth remembering, Hillary Clinton was at Donald Trump's wedding. She took money from him, right? When I'm we're shocked. talking about this issue, she when we're talking like eight thousand dollars, yeah. But do you, do we think that Hillary Clinton was at Donald Trump's wedding because she likes him and wants to hang out with him? Do you him? think most people she are wants people's to get money from because him. they like them? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, that's a good point. It, in my neighborhood, yes. All right. Does the panel expect any revelations to come out of Hillary Clinton's testimony before the Benghazi committee? Right. We'll be off next week. I think she testifies on a Thursday. Uh, we should have mentioned here on the air tonight a yeah. second Republican this week came out and basically said the thing is rigged. It was, it was just to take political pot shots at her. Uh, they can't even keep that quiet. So it's, it's, a, lo it's a longer running committee than the Watergate committee. It's sure. wasted about $4.6 million. However, I have, I have a she contrary... Was, she was on that Watergate committee, wasn't she? She was. I have a contrary <laughs> view. But that wasn't bullshit, there was, was a senator named, there, was a <laughs> sen there was a senator named Senator we William <laughs> Fulbright, who mm -hmm. I think in 1966 held hearings on the Vietnam War. Sure. I think this country would be served well by a real Benghazi committee, which would look at what right. has the United States policy been one of regime change? What were we doing in Libya? Yeah. What has that no, led to in the crisis it. we see play out in the Middle East? That is a real committee. Um, you know, I think, I think that Trey Gowdy has been trying to do the right things. I do think that the Republicans have tripped all over themselves. And if, if they were trying to do the right things, the media attention now has been, uh, whatever effort they put into it, has been kind of sidetracked. The tragedy badly. of all this bullshit opposition is that it prevents the real opposition that the Democrats actually do need because they do lots of bad things. Well, you know I'm rooting for you, John. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. All right, thank you, everybody. I appreciate your help.